Hey everyone, after almost 15 years of service, our Bosch dishwasher started to decline, eventually causing issues where it did not pump water anymore. And while I could fix it, it's a two level system. It no longer matches our new kitchen and the wife was just ready for a new one. Since the rebuild, we have all new Bosch appliances and they all have this style handle up front. Not just the stove and oven, but the refrigerator as well, for which a review video has been done. The only one available with this style handle is the Bosch 800 series, and for all of the different finishes that it comes with, the stainless steel is cheapest. This is, however, their top tier model, coming in at $1,200, with an extra $200 if you need it installed. As shown, there is sometimes a rebate for a free basic install. Given it's the same dimensions as my old machine and I already have plumbing, this shouldn't be too much of a job. So I'll be installing it myself. They delivered it to my kitchen just like this. Confirming the model and style, I'll begin unpacking the unit. Skip ahead if you don't want to see the installation. Energy Guide says $34 a year or 240 kilowatt hours. This is not bad at all. Front will be unpacked last. We don't want to damage it. All small pieces are secured in the bag on the back, including the documentation, with an important notice about hose routing. And here's the bottom panel. Now the insulation on the front can carefully be removed. This hook can optionally be used as part of the install. The drain hose is removed from the cardboard. The power plug is stored in yellow bag. There's also styrofoam under the front feet. And I temporarily adjust these two front feet downward so they don't damage the floor when I remove it from this bottom styrofoam base. Same thing on the other side and adjust the feet. And then I shimmy the whole unit carefully off the styrofoam base. There's a warning on the incoming water that tells you not to remove that filter that's on there. And I accidentally left this 90 on the old machine so I had to purchase another one. I screw in the 90, hand tightening it, no sealant, there's a rubber gasket in it, but I use sealant on the other threads, not Teflon tape, connecting it and screwing it in. It could be argued that this connection should have been done first, it would have been easier, it really didn't matter. Except I did have to support the 90 while tightening that side to protect the plastic fitting on the washing machine. The routing is correct, but the new drain hose is permanently affixed to the machine, so it will have to come out. We see my connections under the cabinet have been disconnected from the C-clamps. I've pulled that old drain hose back and reconnected my hot water line, which I will temporarily test for leaks. I inspect all around the fitting and everything looks dry so I could continue. Shutting off the water, I move on. I do want to get some of the wobble out of this machine before I measure the height, so I adjusted the feet to accomplish that. The rear foot will be adjusted later through the screw during the actual final leveling. So with the countertop at 88 centimeters and the machine at 86 centimeters, we're well within the quarter inch we need to continue. So a basic leveling shows we're good enough to start our installation. Lily inspects the power cord from the yellow bag. A diagram on the machine shows where the power cord connects. So I snap it in, connect it to mains power and we see a lamp test where all lights and indications light up to show you that they all work. All the hoses are then run into the cabinet. The new drain hose is connected and the machine is lined up. I'll be doing a side mount of this machine so these tabs will be bent on these little holes like shown. Fitting into a slot up front under this insulation. The two ears are bent with pliers to secure this bracket into place. A hole in this seal will allow access to the screw that allows this to be screwed into the cabinet. Very carefully and constantly inspecting all sides, the machine is pushed into final position. The machine will need its final level before these brackets are screwed in. The front feet will be adjusted first for level and height, followed by the rear through this screw. I've got my front level and height and it is perpendicular to the cabinets. So I raise the back up now until I start to feel resistance and then I know everything's going to be level. I visually check the canter of the door as it relates to the end of the countertop and everything looks aligned. It doesn't look like it's pitched in any direction, so I'm satisfied. All hoses redressed back under the counter and the water's turned back on, checking for leaks. I now move on to the final brackets that go in right here, locking into position. There's also a screw hole up top. 
and those screws are added after the brackets are installed. The black rubber flap is then dropped down and pushed behind these tabs here as shown, which is followed by the installation of the bottom cover, getting an alignment between this hole and the bracket that was just installed. It may need to move up or down slightly to accomplish this, but then the screw is installed through both sides, completing the installation of this washing machine. Having our first actual look inside after installation, we'll open up the bottom first, and we see that there's a package included in here, a sample of finished detergent, as well as jet dry and some other documentation. There is a silverware holder included on the bottom row, which also allows it to be folded out for larger items. On this machine, it doesn't fit on the left side, only on the right, and probably don't need it at all if you're using the top row. Moving on to the middle now, I've removed this card which talks about connecting the machine to the Home Connect app. We'll do that in a minute. There's also a reminder to register the machine. This rack has wine glass holders that slide forward to lock open in the up position. You can probably hold silverware in there too. Sliding it up and back drops them back down. This sprayer in the middle is powered by the force of the water pump. Moving on to the top row, which is what the wife really wanted. This area here adjusts for wider or narrower stems of utensils, so you can lift it up and now it's narrower. Or you could drop it down for wider like ladles or whatnot. A reference here on this side to small cups or silverware, these sides can be lowered by pressing this button and it drops down, allowing for more room to accommodate small cups or large silverware on these ends. Pushing back up, snaps these sides back into position. The top silverware tray has a dedicated water sprayer. I'll remove the bottom so we could have a better look. Now this is an actual motor, it is not powered by water pressure. The spinner itself off the end does spin from water pressure. So while this is spinning, spraying water, we have this motor spinning around in a circle providing a unique pattern. The soap dispenser is on the door. It is locked shut after loading. If not using pods, there is measurements written into the plastic for the detergent. There's also a port just along the side of that to fill with jet dry as needed. A sticker up top provides some basic information for the machine as well as the QR code for Home Connect. But there's a power button, the type of cycle, some internet and favorite features, and we'll be getting into that with the Home Connect. On the other side, we have some options as well as some power control with custom as well, and the start button that kicks off everything. And it's purported to be 42 decibels. We're going to test that. And another information sticker allowing you to get in touch with Bosch if you have any questions. But we're going to get right into Home Connect, so we're going to scan that QR code with my iPad, which we're going to use in this demonstration. First thing I want to do, of course, is apply power to the machine. So I hit the power button and we'll move on to the installation. Now I'll show you a problem I had with this method that I saw with my fridge. As I open it up, scanning the QR code, I'll hit download app from their website, which opens with that QR code. And then when it opens up the app store, it tells me that that app is not available in my country or region. I don't know why they don't have an American QR code for the US, but if I search for Home Connect in my app store, and then download it, it works just fine. Notice it says Home Connect America. Once download completes, I'll open the app. Once the app opens, I'll scroll through this intro, then I'll press done, read this information and continue to options. You could choose allow to track or not to track, it's your decision. Allow notifications. And while it doesn't force you to initially log in, if you're not logged in, you wanna add an appliance. When you click add appliance, it's gonna ask you to sign in. Now, I already have an account with them. If you want to watch a video that goes into the specifics of creating an account with them, you could click on the link in the comments below for the refrigerator review video. But you can see once you type in your email address, that button says log in or register. If it didn't find your email address, it would take you to a registration page. Having found my account, it prompts me for my password. I also choose stay logged in and press continue. Now we can see I'm logged into the application. I add an appliance, pressing continue. And we can see my refrigerator had appeared in the meantime. So I'm taking to connect appliance, new appliance. I hit continue, then continue again, allow access to Bluetooth. And then I allow in the dialogue that comes up. This is followed by a loading screen that comes up for a few seconds. And then it starts searching for appliances. This actually went on for about a full minute and then told me my appliance wasn't found. This is probably my fault. So I hit connect via QR code. And then I press continue, followed by scan allowing access to my camera. 
and selecting the QR code in the instruction manual. Turns out it was my fault. I do need to first enable wireless on the dishwasher. Let's do that now. Holding the remote start button for four seconds on the dishwasher, we'll see the C on appear and wireless is now enabled. With that now enabled, I'll click search for appliances below. After a few seconds, it says that it found the appliance and is connecting to it. And now it's asking for the password of my wireless router, which I will now type in. It shows the connection has been established and it's transferring data and doing whatnot to set up the appliance. And finally, registering the appliance on the server, which it got stuck on, as we could see, waiting several minutes for this to continue. Eventually, I ended up just closing the app and restarting it. And upon opening it, I saw that it did successfully register my dishwasher along with my refrigerator to the right of it. So let's select the dishwasher now in the app. Immediately we see some notifications and alerts, rinse aid is empty, that the door is open, allow remote start is not enabled, and to permanently allow remote start, I could power off the machine from the app, and I could turn it back on. Scrolling down we get to some menu options, I'll choose settings, and all the default settings seem satisfactory for what just about anybody would be doing, I see no reason to make any changes. What I really want to do is load up this dishwasher and try it out. And we have quite a few dishes that built up over the last two days where we stopped washing dishes in anticipation to try out this machine, knowing its arrival date. And we're just sort of having a go at this until we discover that tall glasses on the top bump into the silverware tray. And there's actually an adjustment right here. We forgot to adjust this. So I'm going to take the dishes out, make this adjustment, lower it down a bit. And now we're going to reload it. And it works just fine, except for the fact that this piece right here that's used to hold wine glasses is inhibiting our larger glasses. Is there a way to remove these things? These big ones can't even go there because they just bend this. So I pop them right out. We could put them back in if we're ever washing wine glasses. With everything adjusted, we continue to load the machine with no further issues. This is definitely full capacity for this machine as we've had a lot of dishes waiting for the machine to arrive. So a good test run for our first run. Opening up the provided package, we have a detergent sample, expired coupons, and a jet dry sample. We'll pour the jet dry sample in now. And top it off with our own bottle, which always makes a mess. Probably designed to make a mess. Place the detergent in the holder and lock it shut. Then apply power. It defaulted to auto, so we'll try that out. Two hours, 28 minutes using crystal dry, no power controls, we'll hit start. And now close the door and it begins. Obviously there's no display to look at when it's closed. There is, however, the indicating light on the floor. Also, the app provides the time and status about the dishwasher if you wanted to see what was going on. There's almost no noise when this thing is running. I set up the decibel meter to record the sounds of this. Came out to around 42 decibels or less as advertised. I received a notification on my phone when the dishwashing completed. Also, the red light is no longer illuminated. As I open the door, it's dry. There's no steam, no nothing coming up out of here. Inspecting the silverware in the far corner for dryness, cleanliness, and spots. Nah, this is clean. No problem at all. Close this out. Second shelf, check this plastic cup clean and dry in the back, as well as this coffee cup. This glass in the middle is clean, no spots, and it's dry. Stainless bowl in the bottom, clean and dry. As well as this one. Now this one went in pretty nasty and has some residue on the bottom. I want to talk about some settings later pertaining to this. And no complaints on any of the other dishes, so we're going to move on. Opening the app again with the dishwasher on, I select dishwasher and make my way down to control. Selecting control, we see some noteworthy information such as rinse aid is low. We have to close the door, allow remote start, and activate permanent remote start. I pull this down for more info to describe what it is, and I press that activate button below. Here I get a better description as to what it does. I select that manual remote start so I can change it. 
Changing it to permanent remote start, I click OK, then told to acknowledge by hitting the remote start button on the washer itself. I press yes, then back, and then press the button on the washer to acknowledge. The notifications are clear, it just shows the rinse aid being low now. Continuing on, I press auto from the menu. I'll go through all the different programs briefly, starting with heavy. As you would expect, as for heavy pots and pans, we can see the water and energy usage for each one on the right side. Then auto, which automatically senses a cleaning based on the dirty water using sensors. Surprisingly, it's not the most efficient. Normal is, as we'll see, the water and energy usage is the lowest on normal. Glass is a special setting. If you have a bunch of champagne glasses that you're washing, you would use this setting. Rinse is apparently a pre-rinse before washing if the dishes are really nasty, allowing that nasty water to circulate out before the actual washing. Speed 60 is a special program that gets everything done in an hour. Machine care is used for the cleaning of the dishwasher itself. I'll leave my setting on normal for this demonstration. Now I'll hit next. And we'll go through the options, starting with crystal dry. And this actually uses zeolite crystals to generate heat while pulling moisture out of the dishes. It's very interesting when I researched this, and Bosch, I believe, is the only one that does this. Energy save drops the energy consumption slightly by making the wash take longer, but lowering the heat. Half load, obviously, there can be savings there if you're only filling up the machine at half capacity. And sanitize another special option if you're trying to get the temperature cycle really high to get something sanitary in the machine. I'll shut off sanitize and half load and leave on energy save and crystal dry. Then I'll press next. This brings us to power control. I mentioned that I would talk about this when I had issues with that pot on the first wash. There are four wash zones on the lower rack and I can adjust them any way I see fit. We can see that I can make them heavy or normal or light in whichever quadrant of the rack I so choose. So if I had a couple of dirty pots on the back left, I may adjust the back left to set to heavy, and I may adjust all the rest to be normal. This is all really based on exactly how you're filling it at that moment. If you generally put pots that are soiled on the back of the lower rack, you could always leave the back set for heavy. I'll leave everything set to normal in this example. I'll hit next. This brings us to the start time and the predicted end time. We can see that the start time is right now, so we could hit done. And at this point, we could hit start to run with the settings that we selected. Of course, I could also stop the machine from the app as well, should I find it necessary to do so. And I could press the update favorite button to make this my new favorite. We can see the new favorite now shown here. And if I select it, all the options that we previously went through and selected are saved. The time start is still right now with the estimated end time. If you really want to, you could assign it a name and color. I don't see the need to do that, so I'm just going to hit cancel. If now selecting from the machine, the favorite cycle with the star can be used to select this. Aside from the machine care setting, the only other thing that has to be maintained is this filter right here. And we can see on the top screen, there's a couple of potato peels that need only be removed by hand. However, there's a secondary filter under this by the sump that needs to be maintained every now and again to make sure there's no buildup. We can see these two arrows aligned. I'll turn anti-clockwise to remove the entire unit. And buildup is expected. Separating the mesh filter from the bottom. And that looks just as good as it smells. Both pieces have been washed in the sink and the filter is reconnected. This whole unit placed back onto the machine and rotated clockwise until both black triangles line up, completing all the maintenance on this machine. And that concludes this video on this Bosch 800 dishwasher. I hope you found this video enjoyable, entertaining, and informative. Do me a favor, hit that like button down below, helps me out a lot when you do, and hit that subscribe button for more videos like this when they come out. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply? <laughs>